วันนี้เราได้รับพระพรที่จะนำเสนอการบรรยายธรรมที่ลึกซึ้งเรื่องหนึ่งชื่อว่าพระสูรางคามสูตรสภาวะถูกครอบงำของสังขารขันตอนที่หนึ่งของแปดตอนในระหว่างอาจารย์และลูกศิษย์ให้ไว้ในภาษาอังกฤษในวันที่28ธันวาคม2018ชูฟังเหรอเนี่ยอ๋อโอเคนี่ได้กูที่ชูฟังชี้เสาชูฟังชูฟังชี้โอเคโอเคทำมันละเดี๋ยวทำไอโอเคทำมันโอเคชี้เสาตาเจ้าฮะ我要谢谢你们而已 ，OK。我要你们<笑> ，Thank you 啦、嗯。我本来要你们坐最前面那里嘛，我一进来就马上就自己丢给你们，放给你们，好玩嘛。然后他们说你们在这里，我认为在前面，结果也是在后面，<笑>对不起了啊。好，没关系。我信还是一样感恩大家，主访人员 ，OK 哈、huh? yeah. ，Thank you <笑>。煮给极尽人唱不容易哈， huh? 每天你们煮的好好啊，我不知道你们怎么弄的，不过做的好好，好像神通广大啊，<笑>好，很很很很壮。安静啊！谢谢大家，嗯，辛苦，嗯，厨房人员是好像最辛苦的，懂不懂？哇，洗啊，擦啊，弄啊，就不停啊，啊，不能停，多人嘛，啊，不过大家都吃得饱吗？ Yes. None of you. I'm b r e a No. <laughs> Hungry? No. no. <laughs> okay. You understand, huh? Spanish. Spanish. Oh man, yes. <laughs> Lucky you all intelligent. Yeah. Yeah. I just do umbra. You know everything. <laughs> you understand what it means. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if the system here is working well. I tell them to try their best. Okay. If not, then we just go to Sihu nearby, huh? It's in same province. Yeah, Sihu is you don't have this building, but you have a, a warm, warm kind of tent, a big tent, and then you put your tent inside, double <laughs> warm. <laughs> yeah, same with me. I have an inside tent and outside there also. I put some curtain, you know, on the, on the, the edge of the wherever you know some structure. I cannot nail anything. Some, but I cannot nail them all because they are iron. So what I do, I open a little door, you know, and then I knot the the how you say, the string. I knot it too big, and then I shut the door so <laughs> and lock it. So the string from this side of the door, uh, also the same side in the other door, and I and they hold they hold it. There's no nail. I just put. You know, in between the door and the door frame, and then I close it. And then I, lucky I brought some of these uh, pin stuff. You know, the safety pin. Yeah, uh, I brought a lot of things. Even my hammer, my <laughs> screwdriver, my plier. You know, yeah, and some nails. 
with some hook. It just don't work here. <laughs> and uh, some string, you know. <laughs> and then <laughs> I hang some curtain, you know, so some piece of of cloth that I found. Yeah, because up there it's very windy. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, when I'm inside the tent, it's okay. Just when I walk around. Everything just flying, you know, cups and <laughs> box. Uh, so I just uh, hang some curtain, just stop some wind. Yeah. But it doesn't really stop, so I push whatever table or chair, you know, against the wall, and it holds the curtain somehow. And you got to use your IQ, huh? <laughs> I prefer that, you know, than in the room. Well, I, I preferred the room before. <laughs> But since it's, it's not very uh, clean yet at the moment, I mean, spiritually, so I go to the roof, yeah, in a tent. I like it there. It's okay. There's no feeling of discomfort or complaint, nothing. It's, it's just wonderful to have a tent. In the Himalaya or in India before, I don't even have a tent. Yeah, I just have a sleeping bag. And an umbrella. <laughs> that is my tent. Yeah, when it rains, I just sit, you know, close it together and the umbrella on top. It's okay. <laughs> I don't know, maybe heaven feels sorry. So when I was there, it's not much raining. And uh, when I went to Kashmir, it's, it's only uh, like a, a mist, you know? Mist, and it's not much, so I put the umbrella. Oh, where my face is and my head, and it's okay. Mm. Therefore, I feel the tent here is a heaven already, yeah? <laughs> Even if I could afford a tent, I could not carry all that, you know, all the way in walking. In the Himalaya Trail, they don't have any car, only horses, and uh, you probably have to order long in advance, yes. It's, I don't see many horses either. And even if there are horses, I don't think I have a, a, a heart to sit on it because some horses, you know, they don't have shoes on their thing and their broken nails and all that. Oh. And the, the, the people who carry luggage also as a laborer, they also don't have uh, good shoes, you know, those plastic kind of flip-flops, a broken half already. Oh, my God. I was complaining to God. I say, if these people... They're working for you. Why don't I see any of your loving comfort in action? Why do they have to walk on the slippery ice with the half-broken flip-flop thing like that and carrying burden on their shoulders, you know? Uh, I went to the Himalaya, you know, the more I went up, the more I don't feel like I was very rebellious at that time. I was thinking, why well, God doesn't take care of them? Just like you, yeah? Everything we blame God. <laughs> we forgot the karma, yes. And then when I went on the way to the pilgrim road to Himalaya, to the Ganges uh, source, you know? Gango tree, Gamuk, and all that. Uh, I met one monk, no, he Hindu monk. He sat on the roadside with just only one plastic sheet on top, as a roof. Yeah, there's no wall. Just they just put um, uh, uh, like a bamboo pole or some wood pole in the middle, and then it's like that, <laughs> nothing else. And then, but he has a fire in the middle, uh, in in his tent. <laughs> and then I complained to him. I say, how come people went all the way from the plane far away and walking distance? Yeah, why God doesn't take care of them? They come here to worship God in their heart. How come they're so poor and so working so laborious in such a condition like that? You know, the eyes block is slippery, huh? It's not just snow. Some part is just pure ice, you know, very flat and very slippery. That is where danger lies, you know? Yeah. I'm so worried about the horses. Sometimes he cannot grip the eyes and it's just staggering around. And my heart's pain so much. And I was really, 
really. Uh, sorry, I was feeling bad about God at that time. <laughs> yeah, and so I complained to the monk, yeah, and he enlightened me. He said, you don't know. These people are special. Me, he mean the laborer. Of course, the one who they carry on the back or, or the sitting on the horse, he don't mean those people. He mean the horses and the laborers who carry these uh, bags. They are special gods. They came to help, to help these pilgrim. Oh, he's so positive. <laughs> I just have to say, oh, perhaps so. <laughs> Maybe you're more enlightened than I am. Well, thank you. I feel better afterwards. I apologize to God. I say, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> but I, it still pains me. Yeah. It still pains my heart. Whenever I see any suffering, no matter where and how and why, I always feel pain. Yes. It really gives me also physical heart pain, and not just talking about it. Yeah. I'm just too sensitive for this world. I don't know how I survive all this time. <laughs> and that was, that was one of the reasons why I left home, yeah, because too many suffering on TV. Yeah? And you can't just sit there and hold the husband's hands and watch all this news and feel in nothing. And that's the way I was. Yeah? And then finally, it sank into your heart, and then you just don't want to enjoy that anymore. You just want to find something more substantial, more real, you know, in order. If, if you don't, could not help anyone, at least you understand why the world is so suffering. At that time, I did not understand why. I want to know why and how we can avoid it. Okay? I did not think that maybe I could help anybody yet, but I really just want to search for something, something better than just sitting in front of TV, holding my husband's hand and, you know, snatching some snacks and enjoying this and that, or even the news, yeah. That is the first ever reason why I wanted to leave home. Okay, well, I hope you guys are better today. <laughs> I see less of these masks. Are you feeling better? Yes. Yes? yes. We should really thank the past masters, monks and nuns and scholars who have taken time to record the Buddha's teaching after the masters and Nirvana. And also for the past and present persons, lay or monks or nuns who have really dedicated themselves, sacrificed their time and precious health or under any difficult situation to translate this so that I can read it to you. And we have to thank them. And may they be blessed forever by all the Buddhas, past, present and future. May their merit be immense. May they be liberated forever. Thank you. According to Buddhism and the believer and the tradition, when you read sutra and all that, you have to put on incense, flower, you know, and bow to the sutra first and thank all the Buddhas and Bodhisattva in ten directions, all respectfully before you read it, okay? And then you cover the sutra also with silk or, you know, beautiful cloth and I just make it more popular. Yeah, more easy, simple. And I apologize to all the Buddha. I say, if I've done something wrong, according to the tradition, my heart is full of respect. It's just that I cannot always do that. So please, all the sin, whatever I've done wrong, is all on me, at least other people, they hear the names of the Buddha, according to the Sutta, they will get benefit. Yes. So yesterday, we were reading, the Buddha was uh, kind of uh, requesting his disciples and the Bodhisattvas to try their best to protect all beings. Yeah? 
but he said, in the Dharma and in age. After my Nirvana, all of you should pass on the Tathagata teachings so that all living beings can awaken to their meaning. Do not let the demons of the heavens have their way. Offer protection so that all can realize the unsurpassed way. It is like this. The Buddha knew after his Nirvana, there will be somebody or anybody or a lot of body come up, you know, maybe just uh, wearing the monk robes or maybe just pretend to be Vimalakirti number second or number third and teaching people the Buddha's teaching without understanding anything. Maybe just read, read, read and uh, somehow maybe uh, enter some samadhi and then talk nonsense. Yeah, or leading people into a bad way, just like the way we discussed yesterday with this uh, physical lust, yeah? Okay. So the Buddha knew that. Mm. Uh, after, it is funny, after any master died, they just tried to copy it, yeah? Not his own direct disciples or, or descendant of disciple. It's just that anybody, you know, Jump in and thinking, oh, it's easy to be a monk, just wear the yellow robe. Yeah? <laughs> they don't know. The monk life is true life is very, very ascetic. Yeah? Take a lot of courage and discipline. Yeah? And you you cannot just still eat meat, drink wine and profess that you are a monk. Yeah? Something like that. But the the later generations, the descendants of the descendants of descendants, they didn't have no idea, no clue. And just as Many other people outside in the world, they have ambitions, yeah? They want to be rich, they want to be famous, they want to be worshipped, you know, things like that. So they just take up Buddha's teaching or Jesus' teaching, whatever teaching of the masters, and become that and then blah, blah on and then make trouble for people. Not only make trouble for themselves by creating bad karma and they will go to hell, I mean, non-stop hell and forever hell, but they even mislead others to fall into these hells. The Buddha is so compassionate. He already foresee the, the future of harm that may be before other innocent beings, and he won't be there to help them. It is like that. So you can see many different religious uh, order people copy the masters, yeah, and doing all kind of, of ritual and all kind of uh, ways, you know, just to entrap people in there and making them busy with just ritual, uh, useless, all kind of useless thing, wasting their time and obstructing them to find the real master to be liberated. So the Buddha say that. The reason he tell all this, we also have to thank... Uh, the Reverend Bodhisattva High Soul Ananda also for asking the Buddha. Yeah, we have to thank him. We thank you <laughs> very much. <laughs> Many things the Buddha taught because Ananda asked. Yeah. So he has a great compassion also. Yes. If Ananda did not ask, we would not have all this. Maybe Buddha did not think about it, yeah? Uh, and if Ananda did not ask on behalf of the mothers of uh, Buddha, then we would not have any nuns, Buddhist nuns nowadays, yeah? Okay. Who knows, maybe one of the Buddha's nuns have become enlightened and continue teaching, you know, a lot of other people there after Buddha Nirvana or during Buddha Nirvana. Yeah, there were some nuns who were very enlightened and have helped some of uh, others who come afterward yeah, to be enlightened as well. If there was not that nun who explained all her own life and her experience to the newcomer, there, will, there wouldn't be so many other nuns who come and practice and know the Buddha's way, so it's very good. So Ananda is very great, <laughs> great Bodhisattva, even though he played his humble role as a Buddha, 
uh, not know too much <laughs> assistance, but he truly possessed the great love of the Bodhisattva, of a great saint. Uh, you should know Buddha or Bodhisattva don't always appear great or uh, sitting on a high chair to talk to people. They do many different ways to, to lead different sentient beings. Even the Buddha say you, you have to be even a butcher and prostitute so that you can lead, do the same like them so that you can befriend them, then you can tell them. Yeah. Maybe visibly, maybe invisibly. Huh? Oh my God. There's no end to what the Bodhisattva and the Buddha are doing. And then the ascension beings is still so blind and groveling in darkness. Isn't that frustrating? All because of Maya. Hmm? Maya. It's too much test to pass. <laughs> and not many can pass. <laughs> that is a problem. If you can pass, <laughs> okay, but <laughs> look like, <laughs> you know, so difficult, difficult. Some people meditate by themselves or enlighten themselves, and they become particular Buddha. You know, they enlighten alone by themselves. But that was because they have past life seat of enlightenment already. But some people, anyone just jump in and uh, meditate and uh, read in the Buddha Sutra and proclaim that he is already a saint. And this is a thing very, very dangerous to, to many people, mm. not just to himself, but to many people. So be careful what you say, huh? Okay. <laughs> Don't tell me any more that you seven, six, eight level and all that nonsense. All I hope is that you liberate it. Listen to me and don't do anything wrong so that I can fish you up quick. That's all I hope for, really. I don't expect any of you become anything big. If you can, wow, I'll be very proud and happy, but I don't dare to expect a lot, okay? Just <laughs> meditate, <laughs> be good. <laughs> But who knows, you, you can be Buddha, you know? Not that you cannot, just I don't dare <laughs> to expect less that I will be very disappointed, yeah? and then boost your ego as well, and that is the thing I want to avoid, okay? <laughs> <laughs>